Queen Station in Japan has opened my eyes to a different world. I never knew I could be in a place that was so curious, exciting, and adventurous. It is a place where people are willing and ready to help you whenever you need. It is also a place where you can experience first-rate technology as well as some of the world's oldest rituals. Hi, my name is Tommy Vallejos and today I'll be giving you a speech on the country and its people in Japan. From their first-rate technology to their old-school rituals, the people of Japan live a lifestyle worth exploring and experiencing firsthand. I had this opportunity in 2005 when I was stationed in Okinawa, Japan to live this in this beautiful country and experience everything they had to offer there. One of the first things that obviously grasped my attention, attention where it was the technology aspect of the country. Most cities had entire districts dedicated to electronics, to uh, previewing and showcasing the most high-tech technology, whether it be video, music, or video games. Um, along with that technology, the people of Japan are very tech-savvy with their cell phones. It's a cell phone culture much of what America is turning into nowadays with everyone having a cell phone and um, it opens up a lot of the young people it opens up their um, minds to both English and Japanese as all phones there are able to text in both English and Japanese so they're, um, they're they experience a, a lot more culture than what just Japanese has to offer or Japan has to offer the nightlife there is very exciting also the bars differ from America slightly and so do the local hangouts where um, any typical street lights up during the night and becomes a whole different place and attitude for anyone staying there. Uh, work life in Japan is is very uh, tailored to um, young adults growing into um, companies, larger companies or smaller companies, working for those companies um, garnering small wages at first, but as they uh, climb through the ranks, they they gain more um, benefits and wages with seniority that holds um, high precedence over there. Uh, how loyal you can be to your company. Everyone strives to have the perfect life of the work. Um, the huge weddings, weddings are massive over there. It's one of the biggest events of a young adult's life. The lifestyles of both the young and old are very exciting and the best part had to be the food for me in Japan. It, it actually still make I'm still craving it to this point um, in time. Uh, the fast food there is much like it is here except the uh, employees are more clean, they're more courteous, it's almost like everyone down there is working for a Chick-fil-A service and, and at the end of every order they say pleasure serving you. It's uh, very courteous. They have they have their own fast food chain restaurants such as Mr. Donut, Moss Burger, which offer um, entrees that are very unlike what we have here. Where we have typical burgers, fries, shakes, things like that. But they have fish burgers, um, fried vegetables, um, ripe tomatoes offered such for appetizers and such things. Um, speaking of ripe tomatoes, it's in some restaurants. Um, when you first walk in and sit down at your table, most most uh, of the time, Isakawa restaurants will offer you things such as ripe tomatoes and dried tomatoes, and uh, things like fried fish and uh, fried eel. Upon sitting down at your table as an appetizer, you're not required to buy it or anything. It, and it, some of these foods are included with your price at the end of the meal. Um, they sometimes they do have a cover charge entering a restaurant much of the food there is unlike what we have here it's it's very fish like uh, culture over there everything's uh, very fishy a lot of raw foods you got your sushis you got your um, the, one of their most famous drinks the sake uh, but for the most part it's a lot of sushi a lot of fish um, you got you they eat a lot of parts of the fish that we wouldn't normally uh, think of eating here in America such as the eyeballs and uh, the guts and the hearts um, of the fish and, and any really any amphibious creature. While both the lifestyle and the food of this region are interesting, it is nothing compared to the amazing landscape you are presented to as soon as you uh, enter Japan. Uh, for the mainland, which uh, is not the typical term um, 
that's used for Japan, but me living on Okinawan Island um, to the south of Japan refer to the main part of Japan as the mainland. Uh, it's often called the land of the rising sun uh, because of the whole the sun rises on the east and sets in the west. One of the most uh, famous landmarks there is Mount Fuji, uh, one of the active volcanoes, the largest mountain in Japan registering in that 3,776 miles. Another one of the great landmarks there is the Great Giant Buddha. Um, many people have seen this. It's a big Buddha, which used to be indoor, but because of storms and wars, is open out in the open um, with no roof above it. In Okinawa, one of the famous landmarks that I visited many times was Shuri Castle, which has been destroyed by both wars and fires over the year, but has managed to um, stay original and most of the thing and has been reconstructed most recently in 1992. The Golden Temple and Imperial Palace in, um, in mainland Japan is one of the, also one of the greatest landmarks that people are more visually connected with than things they see in movies and uh, books and uh, posters. The Imperial Palace is where the Emperor of Japan stays it's compared um, slightly uh, just in um, significance to our White House here, and, um, or or the um, the palace in uh, London. Well, both Japan and its people are very intriguing, and very different from us here in America. The culture, food, and landscapes are exciting place offer an exciting place to both live and visit. It will forever be one of the most interesting places to see in the world. Thank you.